Um, so the second innovation um, on rapid care analysis, um, we're talking about care work, and I was uh, going to start with a definition. Um, what's care work? What's unpaid care work? First, it is the direct care of persons in households, children, elderly, disabled, ill people, and also healthy adults. Um, second, it is the housework that facilitates the direct care of persons. So this is preparing meals and cleaning and washing and household maintenance and a number of other things, uh, water and fuel. Um, and uh, also care of people in other households. So a, a lot of uh, people in rural communities will care for people in other households or as part of religious groups or health committees or other things. Um, there is a lot of other unpaid work that gets done in rural communities by women and men um, on farms and in family businesses. However, this is focusing on the care of persons and housework um, because it is even less, less visible than other unpaid work um, and less understood and, and, and less addressed. So I'm going to first talk about uh, quickly about GEM and households. It was, it was just raised about um, how GEM and EDP programs uh, look at households. Then talk about what Oxfam proposes on care. Um, third, uh, what we think is problematic, uh, how we're defining the problem, um, and the expected improvements for outcomes from doing um, rapid care analysis. And then uh, we'll have um, a discussion about what happened in Honduras two weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, Households um, have always been a part of the Gem and Well methodology um, because what happens in households influences women's roles in markets, and what happens in markets influences um, gender relations in households. Um, so, and in fact, this linkage of both household and market on the gender analysis is uh, one of the things that makes the well program design methodology different from some other women in agricultural markets methodologies. So we want families to benefit from our market and enterprise development, um, but in households, because of power relations or gender or age or status, people are going to have different benefits from uh, what we do. And also, uh, gender roles in household mean that uh, women and men have different access to land, to time, um, to uh, training, and uh, to market services, and that affects the ability to engage in markets. Um, the well part of GEM and EDP also um, aims for women's leadership in markets. Most of our programs are addressing women's control over assets and women's skills in households, which is going to affect how they lead in markets, but also time and work. And we have begun to address this, um, but it's, it's not as common. Um, I wanted to say quickly who else is, is working on this. Uh, so uh, the countries that are in bold um, are the ones that have already done some uh, rapid care analysis, a pilot, and um, others on the list are going to do it in the next month or two. So please ask other colleagues um, here. Um, we've also been engaging research advisors and the humanitarian food security team and gender justice. Um, but why, why are we doing this? What is, um, wh how did this come up? Um, it is in part because of the research that we've just heard about, that women do benefit from produce organizations and from markets, but we have a lot of gaps that producer organizations are not always addressing time poverty, mobility, and uh, husband's restrictions was what women in focus groups said, um, which then are still barriers for women gaining power in markets. 
Also, the Oxfam GB effectiveness reviews uh, about gender justice are showing that women are empowered somewhat in communities, in the, program, the public programs we're doing, but still struggle with the power relations and beliefs and unpaid care work at home. Um, so last year, um, IPE uh, led a learning exercise on women's agency. How do you renegotiate what is happening at, at the home now and in the future in terms of um, assets and uh, work? Uh, and um, what can a markets development program do to facilitate increased women's agency uh, especially at the household level. This is a, a big issue. <laughs> um, we, when we did the exercise on women's agency, we did um, a very quick um, uh, exercise to say, what are women doing for work within um, a week? And what we found was in EDP enterprises and in GEM programs was that women were saying they had between 9 and 25 hours a week for the business because they were doing 30 to 40 hours a week in care and household work and 10 to 30 hours a week, uh, sorry, 30 to 40 hours a week in um, unpaid, sorry, I'm mixing this up, 30 to 40 hours a week in care and household work, um, 10 to 30 hours a week in unpaid work on the farm, subsistence agriculture, and 6 to 10 hours a week on unpaid community work. Um, so what we are trying to do in effect is have women developing businesses very part time, which is not a successful strategy for any entrepreneurs uh, around the world. Um, so this is um, an example from Colombia. Um, there's a lot to say about this diagram, um, but what we'll see is that um, Oxfam is mostly intervening in the enterprise and in agriculture, um, and that 45 hours a week that women um, have of, of work time um, is fairly ignored and little understood um, and undervalued. So that's what we're talking about with the rapid care analysis. Um, overall, um, what we're saying as Oxfam is that we don't want to have less care because care of persons is essential for our well-being. And we want to provide adequate care for dependents uh, and care for adults for all of us is also very positive for development. But around the world, um, it remains primarily a women's responsibility and this leads to significant inequalities. So investing in care is critical for well-being, for equality, and for development. Um, then everybody takes a big breath and says, OK, this is going to take decades. It does. Um, and time use studies take thousands and thousands of dollars, and we need expensive education campaigns and new curriculums and all kinds of things. It's all true. But in most cases, having a few practical proposals in any community can make a big difference to help women participate and lead and benefit from the programs that, that we're in. Um, two examples, UNDP, Bur Burkina Faso, um, did a rural electrification program and then did an evaluation of it. Women were saving two to six hours a day in terms of grain grinding and water hauling and other things. Um, and they were more involved in income generation, more involved in, in political decision making, and girls were going to school. Um, Oxfam Germany and Ireland have uh, supported fuel efficient stoves and did a, an evaluation of it. And on fuel collection and water collection alone with a fuel efficient stove, they found that um, women were saving 11 hours a week. Um, so a few practical proposals uh, are very important uh, to be able to um, get women to work um, better um, in our programs. So um, the, the principles behind doing a rapid care analysis is that we want it to be context specific. We're not imposing anything from the outside. We want uh, women and men themselves to say what is most problematic in the community. 
We want to come up with inspiring practical proposals. We want this to be part of an existing process. So here it can be GEM step B, but uh, humanitarian programs are putting it into PCVA or baseline assessments for raising her voice or other things. Um, we want it to take a couple of days. Um, and this is sort of funny because um, the researchers say it should take a, a week or two at least, if not months. And the humanitarian food security people say, can we have something we can do in four hours? So we, 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 have a, uh, we need something that's pretty flexible. Um, and we also, because of how Oxfam is looking at care, we want to say that this is a social issue, a public good issue. This is not a women's problem, or this is not relieving women's burden. Um, what kind of change are, are we talking about that, that we want to, what's the vision of what we end up with? Um, around the world, the, the, the people working on this say that um, there are very, three very simple steps. One is to recognize care work, which the rapid care analysis does. The second one is to reduce the difficult inefficient tasks, not reducing care itself. And the third is to redistribute women to men, but also families to the state. Because if you put in electrification or water or social services, what you're doing is take some burden off the families and, and um, put it to the state or employers. Um, something happened here? OK. Did it run out of battery? Can you hear me? Yeah, OK. Um, I was in a conference in Geneva last week where there was a proposal for two more R's um, about uh, rights and representation. But for, here, for now, we're going to stick with the, with the three. Um, so um, this is based on the idea that um, care is provided in each uh, society and in each community, not only by households, but also by the state by nonprofits, religious groups, the, uh, the voluntary sector, and by the market, both people who pay for domestic work tasks, and also employers paying for health or sick leave or maternity leave, um, and also companies that, that provide care. Um, and the, the inequality or the quality of care, sorry, the inequality of how care is provided, how much women are required to do, and the quality of the care provided is going to depend on the policies and practices around this diamond. So th this has often been a relief that, that people say, OK, so it's not just that I have to teach my son how to do the dishes. It's, this is much bigger than the household. It's, a, it's about recognizing care work in society. Now we're getting to the rapid care analysis tool. Um, if this is part of step B, um, and there are, uh, in very simple terms, four focus group discussions. Um, uh, Hector will talk about this more, but basically the, uh, roughly 10 men, 10 women. Some of these are done uh, as a, a whole group, and some of them are done um, in, in uh, single sex groups, women only and men. The first one is to get care to be visible, saying, um, who do you care for and who cares for you? What are the care relationships in this community? Uh, in the Philippines, they had who do you care for daily? Who do you care for every week? Um, uh, there's many different ways to do this, to build an understanding about what we're, we're talking about. Um, the second step is um, mapping um, uh, the, all, all of the work that we do. Um, so the, the diagram you saw from Colombia that includes unpaid agricultural work, unpaid community work, natural resources work, first map it all out and show the difference between men and women, and then talk, focus in on the care activities. Um, and you see the purple bubbles, you can't read them. Um, water for bathing, clean living space, washing clothes, moral support, care for ill people, personal care, and meals. Um, and then uh, the idea is to look at, is this old women, women, uh, girls, uh, older men, men, boys, um, how, who is doing what? Um, the third step is to look at the care diamond um, at a community level. What infrastructure and services support care work? 
There's also another exercise that's not um, uh, has a picture here, but it's very clear that care work fluctuates either uh, dry seasons and rainy seasons or harvest and not or um, also when people are displaced before and after they're displaced because Sri Lanka did that uh, or when you have shocks and conflict or food price increases you're, it's going to fluctuate so in some cases our rapid care analysis is going to be very much about what's changed um, and not as much about who does what in the household um, and step four is to say what's problematic and this could be, in this case, it says time, mobility, health problems, smoke from wood fires, um, uh, sore backs, uh, back injuries from carrying wood, other things. Um, and what are the options for change? And then ranking the options by what's feasible and what has positive in impact, which leads to proposals, which um, we're going to hear about in a minute. Um, so I think that's all I'm going to say, and I'm going to pass it on to Hector. We have to put up your presentation. Okay. Good morning, everyone. We would like to share with you uh, the findings of a study we conducted on a women micro enterprise in a rural community community in Honduras, where we applied this. Uh, a rapid care analysis tool. This is a picture of the participant of the event in the community. Um, the objective were to generate evidence, uh, data and learning to develop a care work strategy for both the community and for our uh, sustainable livelihood program in Honduras aiming at reducing and relocating the workload related to unpaid household jobs of women participating in the World Initiative. And the other one was to make proposal to overcome main barriers preventing women from participating in income generating activities. Uh, this uh, micro enterprise is formed by 11 women uh, which is supported by regional research project, LAC region, and uh, Oxfam in Honduras. It's a very poor community and has have a high migration level to the USA. On average, women have between five and seven children in the main economic activities agriculture. Uh, the community has a very strong influence of the Catholic Church, and uh, they have a very good uh, organization, community bodies, and there is a lack of state services, uh, only a basic school secondary, and road in bad condition, and actually a project, water project. Uh, the finance. We found that women are working 103 hours a week of care work, and in total, 150 hours a week. And the men just working for 61 hours by week. It's a very big difference, as you know. The most difficult and time-consuming care tasks for women are food preparation, <coughs> between three and six hours a day, and caring for children. The caring work is carried out with support from family members, family members of this woman, especially grandmothers and mother-in-law. And ideas and beliefs about gender roles and patterns of caring is strongly based on religious principles. And we can use this information to launch an awareness campaign with the community and the leadership. That is a picture of the tools we implemented with the community, women and men. This is the flowers. Okay, um, when we discuss about the proposal, the option to overcome the problematic issues, uh, we rank it three. 
prioritize three. The first one, advocate for electricity power project in order to reduce uh, the working time for women, maybe between two and five hours a day. The second one, redistribute caring work amongst all family members, uh, mainly the women, that is uh, the men, excuse me, the men. There is a race of opinion. Some of them are willing and others are still uh, skeptical on this issue. And the third one is set up a daycare service, it's not necessarily mean the building, a building, but uh, to organize, organize the service between the families uh, while the woman go to the, to the migrant press world. Okay. This is the main result of the investigation, and we are expecting to the question. One of the things that um, we have done is that a gender expert is not required to do this. Um, and you can have general understanding and sensitivity and use these tools. Um, there are a lot of uh, thoughts actually from the five countries that have already done this about how it works best. Um, the other thing that I wanted to just uh, show, sorry, is that um, 150 hours, you all are doing the maths and think, how is this possible? A lot of this is simultaneous activities. So you cook and you care for kids and you weed your garden. Um, however, what this means is that um, women are not mobile. Um, they, so if, if what you do is to say, um, okay, well, let's have a fuel efficient stove, and so then you don't have to do the cooking part, um, and if somebody else weeds your garden, uh, then you can go off and do the marketing. Well, no, you've still got the kids there. So by, by putting the simultaneous activities into the picture, um, you really see what the barriers are on mobility as well as time. Okay, um, we don't have a lot of time right at the moment, so we'd like you again in your groups um, to first say, um, what do you think about this? Um, what would you take from it? Uh, what pieces would you do? What, what might you not do? And also um, think together about what the most important clarifying questions are, and then Hector and I can answer some questions in a few minutes. Yeah. Um, let's, let's see if there are a few quick questions, and then we're going to coffee. Um, does someone have a mic to carry around? Um, yes, we've got one question there. Yeah, I, oh. Okay. Yes, please. Um, yeah, go ahead. Um, my name is Chacha from Kenya. Now, in the presentation, uh, part of your uh, assertion was that uh, it is important to invest in, um, in unpaid care because it brings the benefit of a precondition for women's political, economic, and social empowerment. Now, it didn't come out clearly because are you saying that we need to propagate for, uh, for women uh, to provide unpaid care services because it's a way of enhancing their political, economic, and social um, standing in society. It wasn't clear. Okay. Number two, yep. on the three R's, one of the R's was to recognize uh, unpaid care. But it didn't come clearly the how. How would we recognize? What are some of the um, proposals that you could have in terms of how we can recognize Great question. Uh, paid care? Okay, in, um, I'll take a couple more. Yeah. Who else? Uh, thank you uh, for the uh, presentation from, uh, uh, this, uh, from Rwanda. It's from Honduras. So Honduras, sorry. Yeah. It's from Honduras. So we did uh, some sort of care analysis in Bangladesh, uh, particularly focused on Chile market. And we found it, uh, on an average, uh, women work uh, on an average 12 hours per day. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, uh, in a week, it will be uh, 84 hours. So it is a uh, you know uh, huge workload for women uh, to engage in household care work, unpaid productive work, paid productive work, as well as uh, 
Uh, uh, sorry. I feel that, uh, you know, the, uh, and also some uh, community work. So they are engaging uh, different types of activity. So, but we uh, uh, designed the intervention to address these issues. But this is very difficult to find out the way. So if you see the uh, Honduras proposal, there is a two proposal. One is distributing the care, another is uh, you know the advocating for electricity uh, uh, power projects. This is the only two proposal. I can't hear you. Could you move so, the mic away from your okay. yeah. So my question is how we can address these issues. Yeah. So how we can, what strategy we can take to reduce the workload at family level. So this is my uh, question. Excellent. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have a doubt on the third question on the care methodology. Yes. You were talking about infrastructures. So in the, this group, we were talking about electricity, water access. But could you detail more on what do you talk about infrastructures, or how do you make it? Because it may be different from community to, to, to community. And then my second question is to, to Honduras, because I've seen the astonishing results uh, that women work 150 hours and men just work 60 hours. Does 103? Okay, but does these results, presenting these results to community, what impact did it have to community? Because I, mean, I imagine this exer exercise must be difficult to do, and then the impact of it, if you can, yeah. Do you want to run the response to this? Um, I, I, Ipe, yes. Who is, and, and the Philippines has a wonderfully big group that has uh, worked on the rapid care analysis. So my question is for Hector, uh, because you, you mentioned about the pilot uh, doing two things. No, one is to be able to identify these proposals that is in the slide, but the other one is about how it informed your EJ program strategy. So I'd like to find out how did it inform your program strategy and what is the strategy? Okay. Um, I'm, I saw that there were other hands up, but we'll try these because I, I know you also want coffee. <laughs> so, um, investing in unpaid care. Basically, the idea is that um, governments and businesses and development organizations think all the time about investing in the paid economy, the market economy, the productive economy, to be able to make um, work be more efficient, uh, to be able to be more productive, more yields, more. Uh, there, there's a lot of work done in investing in the paid economy and in the productive economy. The unpaid care economy, especially, has very little investment. So m my, my experience is that even in terms of microfinance, you can often get a loan for equipment for your farm or for your export crop or for irrigation, but not for piping for your uh, household washing, or a fuel-efficient stove, or a new roof to dry your clothes under. So there's, what we want to do is invest in uh, the equipment and the services and the infrastructure that facilitates the care of people. Um, and that will, by definition, help women who now have the responsibility to do all of that caring um, in very poor employment conditions, if we're going to put it that way, um, and so that we will have better care outcomes and women will have more time, more energy, and more health to be able to be um, involved in politics, um, to get training education, and also to um, be involved in the enterprises and the productive economy. So that, that's what we're talking about. Recognizing unpaid care is, 
exactly what Hector did and the Philippines and Bangladesh and other places have done at a very local community level. At a very national level, there are, since 20 years ago, there have been efforts to have time use studies that are carried out at a national level to go into the systems of national accounts and uh, uh, be a part of government policy making uh, to find out the same issues that we've been talking about at a community level. Um, so interventions and strategies and, and infrastructure, so yes, Rural electrification, solar panels that, that run a grain grinding mill or a water pump are probably some of the things that will be the easiest and most practical and compelling about what we'll find. Um, fuel efficient stoves as well, but then um, uh, uh, Sri Lanka had a, a very interesting outcome of their rapid care analysis pilot. It was taking a long time for parents, mostly women, to walk children to and from school, morning and afternoon. If you have a bus service, then the children go on the bus and the women have another two hours a day. Um, so that's another thing. There are obviously a lot of social services where you have HIV um, prevalence or uh, lots of disabled people, health services, kindergartens, daycare services. There's lots and lots of infrastructure and services that make it possible also for us as we live our daily lives to be able to balance uh, care responsibilities and, and our work. I'll hand it over. Okay, um, when the community discuss um, the amount of hours that women work and men work, they discuss and they analyze and the men uh, committed to change. <laughs> Uh, because some of them uh, was migrant in the USA and they cook in the United States. But uh, when they came back to the community, it's the woman that cook for them. So uh, we are going to, to follow up uh, through the partner organization in order to have an action plan in this community in order to improve this relationship and kind of work. And for our program, we have decided uh, that uh, always we are began to promote an uh, economic initiative, we are going to implement this Kenny World initiative before the well, for example. In the other communities, maybe the poorest ones, we have uh, worked with other politics, gender policy, for example, integrated to the making decision bodies at the community level. But uh, we realized that uh, when we support, we promote, the economic initiative, we didn't incorporate this uh, issue in our analysis. So it's a process. We are jointly um, to be a consensus with the regional, with the communities, in, uh, even in Oxfam and Honduras. <laughs> 